Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave Daily Update for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 for Monday, September the 16th, 2024. I actually do not have very much to be adding to what I presented over the weekend in the weekly update. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to update those individual levels and just kind of add that, number one, we now have all the updated chart with the roll going out to December in the futures market. So with that in mind, here we are, S&P 500. The market just basically traded in a very small range compared to what we've been seeing lately. And so basically turns into this little glitch right there. So again, what I'm looking at is the possibility of one, it's an A, B, and we're going to do a larger C wave down. Two, that <clears throat> this minor four will go over here. So this A, B, C is of, my, of minute degree and the minor four goes right there. And this somehow works out to be one, two, three, and that's a four and we're inside of a fifth wave. And if that's being the case, then we likely are going to start heading higher. And I'm leaving it open to basically actually say one, two, and we're in for a much larger three. That being the case, we have 5792, 6003, and actually then 62. So let me rephrase if I'm going to do that. I'm going to reset this particular one because it's got to come up a little bit different. We got to go back down to here and then put it on. Yeah, I got to leave it to one and then put that over to here. It's going to change our picture just a little bit and basically make some adjustments coming off because of the height that we've reached already. I'm going to take that one off, that one off, that one off, and leave this one on and this would be for uh the minor five so i'm going to leave these two on and say okay so what we have is 5810 and then 6032 now that would be as if we we're coming up this is minor four all right so this would move come over here and then we'd have one two three this would be four and we're off to the races within this minor fifth wave. First stop, 58.10, definitely goes. And on the adjusted contract, that high is now 57.78, and this is 58.10. So it creates the new high and would likely finish the whole package. A break there would throw us up to 2.618, which is 6,032. So we leave those 58 to 6, 6,000, 5,800 to 6,000, remain in the picture if indeed this is what's going to happen. Now, the market itself is not giving us any clues as to, oh, yeah, we're still really kind of just working on all this other thing. So the market continues to really be a function of the flows, as, as I've talked so often about, and that's really what produced some of the moves today. Uh, we saw within the NASDAQ or just within tech, there were quite some uh, larger movements in that, in the NASDAQ, that were brought on by sellers coming into Apple, sellers coming into NVIDIA, sellers coming into SMCI, sellers coming into Tesla. So for whatever the reasons are, they came out of expiration and they decided that's what they needed to do. So the flows really jumped in on those levels. Now, what did that do for our picture here in the S&P? Not very much. Again, not very much. So again, reviewing, if indeed we still have upside to go, well, then that's what we're looking at. Looking to finish up, and here's our resistance levels for that. I'll be able to possibly, if we get another signal, that it is definitely going to do that, which would be a break above 57.24 and a break above 57.78. That would definitely push it in, and then we'll have some additional levels to include here. Now, coming down as if this is A, this is B, and we're coming off in a C wave. That remains active unless we break above 57.27, which is the high of the B wave. 
I would say that we're not necessarily going to be going one or just A, B, and then one, two with wave two uh, takes out the start of wave one. So that, we don't have all that much, right? Closing pretty much right up there. Uh, 56.95, would, I'm rounding it up. And this is 57.28. So we got 33, 34 points before that particular view becomes invalidated. So here's how I can leave this. If we start to drop down, then yes, everything remains in place and that we could possibly be in this following, which would be we have A, B, 1, 2, and we're going to start coming down in wave 3 of C. Now, if that's the case, here are our fibs. And they really, I actually need to add one more level because, boy, they could come flying down because they're just hanging on to this upside, primarily because the Dow and, and the Russell were fairly strong today. And that uh, kept the S&P a little bit higher. So here we would have, right? If we're in that, this the orange fibs here, those are for that minor wave four. So again, this is A, this is B, and then we got one, two. That can only stay in effect as long as it does not break above 57.28. If it heads and starts heading lower, we have support at 55.34, 54.29 or 54.30, 52.61, and then ultimately 49.88. Now, I'm not suggesting that wave three would take us down to there, but it has pretty fair chance that it could if something got going. Now, here's the other, that what we're looking for is again, this would be for this wave down. And this, these fibs here are for the entire C wave. So, 618, I leave it there because it likely will become, if we are in the C wave, it likely would become that we're in 50, 53, 53 should provide some type of support. Maybe just to finish a particular wave pattern and then we get a little bounce. But ultimately, we'd be looking for wave C to take out that low. And now basis of the December contract, that low is 5177. So once that takes place, then we know that wave three is going to be uh, excuse me, that wave C is going to be longer than wave A of greater. And I would expect even more. So that takes us down to here. So 47.49 for wave C. That brings us into the 50% retracement at 47.80. It also breaks through a lot of other levels. So what we also have in there is 5,002. And without any straight fibs to go along with it, I'm going to be hanging on to that one at 51.22. A break below brings us down to that 5,002 level. That just happens to be 0.382. And if I pull this open again, here we are back inside here, if indeed minor four is still in progress. So we still have all of these things. Now, what do we also got coming on? The Fibonacci time sequences, right, or time fractals, do suggest today, which obviously come and gone, and we're not at different lows for the cycle. And so what pushes it out is that we have Wednesday and then a few other time fractals that may be coming in middle of, uh, towards the end of the weekend into middle of next week. Now, those remain effective right now. But since today didn't come through, it it doesn't raid, uh, raise the bar in terms of that this completed wave four and that we're in there, but it adds one little notch. Doesn't raise it up high enough where we were like, whoa, all the rest of this is garbage and now we're going up there. Um, because today's strength and the Dow could be tomorrow's weakness. So, again, <clears throat> we could see a bounce in the NASDAQ tomorrow and, and the S&P and the Dow and the Russell all start to sink. Seems to be the way things are going right now. But I, I believe we're going to be in tight ranges 
until the Fed, and actually probably until the end of the week. But the Fed should be able to release some gamma, some volatility, some a lot of everything that's kind of getting pent up in anticipation of what it's going to be. So what I'm hearing right now, 25 basis cuts pretty much factored in. 50 basis points cut has now raised up to, I, I don't know how it finishes out, but midday it was about a 40% probability that we could get a, a half a point uh, cut in the rate. The third one, nothing is going to happen, is really dropping down in terms of how what's the probability. It has to remain, but it's not gaining a lot of traction. It's just kind of there. And then I also heard that there was a couple of senators or one senator who was basically saying that the Fed should cut three quarters of a basis point. And I think that that great thought free up a whole bunch of money, but I don't think that 50 or 75 is actually going to be a positive thing for the market because it starts to reveal some back story to it. It's like, well, what does the Fed really consider? What are they, what are they worried about now? First, they were worried about inflation, getting it down to their target. Now that they're within reach of their target, they're either going to, and I tell you, I've been holding this thought for a long time, that the Fed would just increase the target to 3% and go, bing, bang, we met it. We're there. After months, after months, after months, uh, we, we intend on meeting our 2% goal. And, you know, so what's the worry now? Well, employment. Uh, you know, how, yeah, it's the employment numbers. It's the, it's other ec economic data versus the inflation numbers. How's the rest of the economy going? How, how are things really kind of coming on? What's getting heated up? So it's always going to be something. So we have numbers coming out the balances this week. And then, of course, the Fed, they're Wednesday. But then, I guess, you know, the week after, we're starting to head towards the, um, well, this Friday is actually the monthly expiration on the 20th. And then we're really then staring into the quarterly, which is the end of September. End of September, believe it or not, folks, we're done with the third quarter. And then we're going to be pushing into the fourth quarter. So much fun when you, so much time passes so quickly when you're having fun, right? So if wave C, those are our numbers coming all the way down. And <clears throat> here we have here, if it's just a third wave. So those are kind of the purple ones. And if third could take us all the way down to 5261, maybe 5429. I don't think so because we really need to go farther than that. So I would say here is a more effective one, if indeed it's coming off in a third. Otherwise, it could be super strong and we can come all the way down to here. So upside, we run this way. So we're running it from here to here as if what if this is continuation of a fifth wave? Then we have 58, 10 and 6,032. Those all remain valid right now. Now here, if I have to use my RSI, well, it's very, very slightly. We punched up into it. They kind of came down below. We're now closing right at the potential that we're going to be oversold. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Not oversold, overbought. So relative strength, almost non-existent according to that indicator. And even if I bring it down and we take a look at it on the hourly chart, pretty non-existent. And let's take it up to the daily chart and let's take a peek at those moving averages flat as pancakes, although in alignment to go up on the daily. Okay, so yep, we kind of push, push forward here. So the daily remains more positive for continuation to the upside. That brings this into play. All right, so, but like I said, first of all, we need to get above 57.29. Then we need to get above 57.78. 
So, and now let's go over and take a look at the NASDAQ. So again, not very much, not very much at all. And let's try that again. Good old NASDAQ. NASDAQ saw a little bit bigger range today. Like I said, we there were a lot of sellers in Apple. There's been talk now about Apple iPhone 16 and the rest of their presentations of like how all these new products are going to be uh, received, et cetera, et cetera. And so uh, from the opening, Apple just got hit and it did not let up. It did not let up all session. Yeah, it bounced here and there, but the but the the pressure was to the sell side in Apple today. So, and then a lot of the other ones just kind of had to follow suit. Uh, what did manage to do okay was Microsoft, yeah, basically closed up less than a point, but Microsoft was was bouncing higher. And as we go into the after hour, it got marked down. We have Meta, that basically same thing, it got marked down. So we got a lot of stuff that gets marked down like in that extra half hour, excuse me, extra hour at the end of each session. Each regular session. Now, NASDAQ still got this triangle pattern going. And so that would be A, B, C, D, and we're going to come down in that E wave. Now, if it is, what can I look forward to? Well, first thing I'm doing, I'm going to bring it back down to the four hour chart, it gives me a little bit more room. And so this is an ABC, let's say. And I'm going to come in. And we're going to put in just some regular fibs. And so what we have coming down now for triangle, right? That we look at this as wave D and we're looking for that E wave, 3825618. So I'm going to go in and let's clean it up. And then we're going to take a look at it. Ding, ding, 3825618, ding. Oops, leave that, leave that, take that. And it would be of... The minute degree, which I'm going to label in the white, or the grayish white, I should say. So here we have it. And there they are. So but we would come down in an A, B, C, and the C wave would bring us down into here. We have 19,334, 19,188, 19,042. And again, reflecting the December contract. So... And actually today or tomorrow, everyone should be rolled out to the December contract due to the volume now at today, as I suspected, uh, is greater. The volume is greater in the December contract versus the September contract. So based on that, we still have all three still of, of, of basically in effect here or possible. And first one being that we have that the triangle pattern is still in progress. And that would be A, B, C. We put the D up here and we're coming down in the E wave, looking for it not to get all the way down and break below that level, 18,568, but getting us down to either like 50%, 618. That's kind of the target. But 3A2 could be at two. Now, it just, I'm going to bring this down to the hourly chart and we can take a look. It just really is just not very much yeah those are decent moves and they were tradable but the whole thing like that's that's pretty much the second half hour or the second hour of trade got us down there and then it's just up 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 down up slow and nothing so it's kind of the way of the world right now so but in any case it could be a b c a and this could be a b and we come dropping down in the c wave and then we put in an e-wave. Um, other thoughts that we could have, again, being that we're coming, and oh, i got to take it out to my four-hour chart so I can see it all. all right? If, if this is going to be minor four, and this ends up being one, and this ends up being two, and we're in that third wave, well, it's got to go. And those are those levels right there. It's got to go, All right? We have three, 20, 20, 20, not a stopping point, just a resting point. 21,252, 21, yeah, but I need it now above. We three should, should, should break above 
uh, the existing high for the summer contract is 21,213. I definitely need it above there if this is going to be uh, one, two, and a three, and a four, and a five. So here we have that, but it's likely going to come in between if indeed, if indeed it's a third wave up, right? Longest and the strongest. This just makes it equal to the first wave, if that's what that would have to be. So we're looking for either a greater boost. Can we get that before before Wednesday? Doesn't seem likely. And with the sell pressure being put on the market today, you kind of shrink away from that. All right, so bringing that back up and let's take a look. So we have the ABCDE. We've just went over that one. We also have the fact that what if it's A, B, and we're in a C wave, and this is one and this is two. And then we have this down here. And so a third wave coming off would definitely, here it's just a resting point, 618, 18,087. We're looking for it to get below that level. So we have 16,734, and that takes us below this level. And so that would be actually, I kind of goofed up on the color. So let me change that and put it to the correct color because it's going to come down in a minute wave C. So let's do that. That cleans it up. So this, I will just leave it. Everybody gets the same color, even though it's not going to be. So this would be the C wave coming down. And we're looking for wave C to be equal to wave A, 16,734. Well below, works out. So that would what that would suggest, right? A, B, 1, 2, kablooey. Now, after today's performance, if it, the weakness really caught persistent, you'd I'd be looking for it to come down and smash all the way through all of this. I'm just really starting to break and also break the volatility triggers. Break any put wall that might be sitting in there. Now, again, you know, that's that's important data, but that's really what I feel that today really was in control of what and how things got moved around. And that was the, was the options flow. And in all of these individual stocks, and a lot of them just all the way across the board. And so that's what I think just happened today in advance of Wednesday. So that's really about it. That's about all I could do is just repeat myself. And I'm sorry for that. I'm going to go over and take a look at what we got economic-wise on Tuesday. We have U.S. retail sales, industrial production, capacity utilization, uh, 8.30 a.m. U.S. retail sales, 9.15 a.m. industrial production capacity utilization, 10 a.m. business inventories and home builder confidence index. Again, not necessarily light, but not ones that I would be really thinking could put a severe push to anything. It could, but again, you know, was I expecting the Nasdaq to really just kind of start to slice through while the while the Dow and the Russell decided to go up? Hmm. It happens. So that's going to be it for today. The next update will be on Tuesday, September the seventeenth.